Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we talk for RC model airplanes, different wings, different lift. Let's get to it. Different aircraft wings have different characteristics of lift. It also depends where the motor is. And so what I'd like to do is talk about some of these differences. So as an RC model airplane pilot, when you see a new design or plane that you're going to fly and you may not have flown that type of plane before, say it's your first electric ducted fan, you can have some appreciation idea how that airplane may fly in the air. Now it depends on a lot of things with the airfoil shape, the size, uh, the weight of the airplane and so forth, but these are some general um, thinking points that can you can start to have with as you start to understand these uh, concepts. So what I'd like to do is start off with pretty much a classic uh, trainer type uh, wing shape. That's just a rectangular wing with parallel wing and leading edges, classic for a trainer with a prop in front that provides airflow over the wings. These wings are characteristic of any trainer that's flown, model, full-scale Cessna 150, and so forth. But what I want to point out is, in addition to the wings having very uh, stable and user-friendly flight characteristics, also by having the prop here, the prop wash, the prop blast from that, does create some amount of relative wind over the wing, which will help with the lift of that airplane. It all combines to have a very um, comfortable, easy-to-fly airplane. So let's take a look at the Blue Jay RC trainer, and you'll see just this setup with a tricycle landing gear, just plenty of thrust, how it takes off in a pretty quick fashion and very easy to fly. The Blue Jay is just your classic trainer, tricycle gear, high wing, rectangular, air foil, lightweight, plenty of power, just takes right off, nice slow flight, four channels of control. This is just a um, easy to fly airplane, good prop wash over the wing, very easy to handle and just makes for a nice landing aircraft, typical for a trainer. As a reminder, all the models that you see in this video, um, I have a complete video on them. Links will be in the description if you'd like further information. The other extreme from that trainer is something like this J-10 electric ducted fan aircraft. Now what I want to point out on this is, remember when the propeller is up front, the prop wash goes over the wing. There is some amount of lift from the uh, relative wind of that wing. In this case, all the thrust comes out of the tail. It's an electric ducted fan. So every ounce of lift that's created on the wing has to be from the relative airflow of the aircraft moving through the air on the takeoff run. What this means is for the takeoff, we're going to have a longer takeoff run. It's going to be at a higher airspeed. And in addition, this has a uh, delta wing, the tri triangular wing shape. The delta wings are popular with aircraft designers for very high speed flight. They have good high speed flight characteristics. However, they lose a lot when you come to land. It's just they're just not user friendly to a slow, stable landing approach. Probably the best example of a delta wing plane that we're all familiar with is a Concorde. Uh, that is a pure delta wing. And just to show you how um, uh, challenging this can be, just like this airplane with a model, there are no flaps or leading edge slats to help with the landing approach. There are none. Same with the Concorde. There were no flaps there, which is why the Concorde had a very nose high approach to keep up its uh, a high angle attack for landing with no flaps. So with this model, uh, we can expect a high takeoff speed. It's going to have to fly fast to maintain lift. Remember, on the real airplane, these canards help with the low speed uh, handling. They don't move in this aircraft, but they do in the real one. Also, you can take a look at the landing gear, fairly narrow landing gear due to the nature of the fighter. So it's going to be a little bit wobbly on landing. That all is to be expected. But again, you get no help from the thrust flowing over the wing and your control services for your initial takeoff. The J-10 is a pretty well-handling electric ducted fan and probably the opposite of a trainer. You can see here in the takeoff, plenty of thrust, but it really takes some distance to get that relative airflow over the wing to produce the lift. In the air, it handles well, but again, you're keeping your speed up. <clears throat> uh, Elevons handle well and just a little fast on the landing. Another example of RC models flying that you should um, be aware of is 
A lot of the modern day jet fighters uh, are designed such that a surprising amount of lift comes from the fuselage itself. This is my SU-27 model that I flew from FMS. It flew very well, but the wings are fairly large and the wings pretty much blend in the fuselage where it's a blended lifting body wing designed to help with the flight. And so this makes for quite well handling model. As I mentioned, a lot of the lift comes from the uh, fuselage for this. Now again, you have the ducted fan uh, on there, so there's no airflow over the wing itself. But you can see from this uh, video here, there's a pretty short takeoff run, and the airplane handles very well. You'll see my landing, I made a mistake. I had a little bit of a high sink rate for a firm touchdown, but that's all part of the learning process. The SU-27 is another electric ducted fan. Again, all the thrust out the back, but you can see it's a fairly short takeoff run. Lots of power. But that fuselage provides a surprising amount of lift in addition to the wings. Again, this is my first landing. Got a little bit of a sink rate coming down and touched down hard, but managed to taxi back and lesson learned for future flights. Another very interesting example for an RC model that's kind of between the tractor motor in front, plastic air over the wing, and a pure pusher like an electric duct fan is this Sealand Air Plus airplane here. So this is one of my favorite airplanes. I really like it a lot. You'll notice it has no landing gear. It has this uh, high impact plastic to just land and take off from the ground, but it handles exceptionally well. But what happens when I look at this, again, like with the SU-27, F-15, F-16, there's a lot of lift from the fuselage that blend into the wing itself to provide lift and a fairly large wing to do that. So that's in its favor. However, the propeller is back here. There is zero blast over the wing to help with lift on the initial takeoff. Remember, we're scooting along on the ground. We don't have any landing gear for this or hand launch if you want to do that. But what's kind of interesting is this is a pretty powerful motor with a three cell and it's blasting directly over the elevator and rudder, a fairly large rudder for turning on the ground. What that means is even if you might get a little bit slow in the airspeed and the wing needs a little bit more relative wind to produce the lift, with a blast for the prop over the elevator and rudder, you'll have very strong control authority for positioning the nose. And it makes for an interesting flight because even if you're almost on the edge of a stall, you can still maneuver the nose because of this. Just remember to keep uh, your speed up. If it looks like you're going to stall, you do not have the benefit of the prop wash over the wings. But again, just something to understand when you take this and fly it for the first time. The Sealand Air is fast becoming one of my favorite airplanes. Plenty of power. You can see it just scooting along on the ground. Just, just fun. Uh, we can, I'm literally turning with the rudder and the airflow. We line up with the runway full power, it just takes right off and is a surprisingly steady, true flying aircraft. There's no pitch changes or anything as you add uh, throttle. Comes around with the large wing and a little bit of the lift of the body providing lift, provides for a very smooth touchdown. Also, the plane is made out of styrofoam. It's ideal for flying off water. You don't have to worry about it tipping over, uh, dragging a wing tip. It just is super steady. And again, we're turning here just with the air rudder. There is no water rudder on this airplane. Apply the power and you're up and away. And it just is it's just a good flying airplane. And uh, it slows down fairly well, turning, and just a lot of fun to fly off the water as it is on land. Another variation on electric ducted fan is this uh, plane, the Boeing 787 from Banggood. Again, links are in the description. Notice it's not a ducted fan, but in a sense for flying it is because we have the twin pro pusher motors uh, right here on the back. So there's no airflow over the wing from these props. A little bit will help with the elevators, but nothing over the wings. Now this particular one turns from differential thrust on the prop. Uh, there is no ailerons or rudder. That's a separate discussion, but when I see this with the swept wings, remember the swept wings on an airline are, divide, are designed for optimum efficient flight up at altitude. It is not designed for a low speed flight for landing, so there's very complex leading edge slats, trailing edge flaps to help the airplane slow down for landing. Anybody that's flown on an airline, you can see the wing, just all the flaps come out to help it to land. This model doesn't have that. However, it's a pretty lightweight model. It's well designed, there's plenty of thrust from these pusher props, but 
I can see just by the swift wing design, you're going to have to keep your speed up. You don't want to slow down. If a landing is going to come in fairly fast, it's just the way this airplane is designed. Plenty of power from the twin pusher props. It's a lightweight airplane, but again, it is a swept wing. You do have to keep your speed up, and once you honor that, it flies well and very nice in the touchdown. A perfect example of the beneficial effect of prop wash over the wings, uh, increasing the relative airspeed for lift, is the um, foam board twin engine airplane that I designed when I designed and built my first twin engine model. This is a rectangular wing. It's, um, it's about 42 inches in wingspan. There was a lot of power from that engine. Uh, just for an ease of design, I did not put on landing gear on this airplane, so I had to uh, hand launch it. You'll see here in the flight video that when I hand launch the airplane, I, I just take it and I kind of point it up a little bit. It produces so much thrust. I felt like I could almost let it go and fly out. I just pushed it and you can see it just flies away at a very low airspeed because of all that prop wash over the wings. It's a very nice flying airplane uh, and you'll see here in the video. The Twinster is literally light in my hands. So I let it go. I just, I just dropped it and it just flew away. Again, a lot of that, because it, it's flying at zero airspeed initially, is a prop wash over the wings. It handles very well with that rectangular wing. You can see fairly slow flight here and very smooth on the approach and touchdown. Beautiful, man. Another variation on this theme of different wings, different lift, is this uh, Galaxy ship um, model that I, that I recently received and flew. This is a lifting body design. There's no real wing here. You have this kind of wing fuselage inter interconnect with the sponsors here. I'm not quite sure all what makes this thing fly. It flies exceptionally well. I think there's some lift from the sponsons that adds the lateral stability. A lot of lift from here. It flies at a very high angle of attack. These twin motors with differential thrust for turning. It does provide prop wash over the elevator that helps with uh, pitching the nose at a fairly low airspeed. But again, just another difference we can have with these wide range of almost ready to fly, ready to fly model aircraft. And you just have to have different approaches. Luckily with the twin engines, these are pretty powerful engines that provide a lot of thrust, but you know, throw you off initially because it flies at a very, very high angle of attack and it's, it's very comfortable flying at that high angle of attack. The Galaxy ship is a very interesting aircraft Plenty of power from the twin props, differential thrust to help with the turns. It does have an elevator, but it's a lifting body design. You can see this high angle of attack, about 45 degrees between the wing cord line and the relative wind, but it's under total control, very steady, turn of the differential thrust, just an interesting plane to fly. Another kind of unusual design is one that I designed, I call the square flyer. It was literally a square piece of 3 6 inch foam board, 20 inches by 20 inches. I put a motor up front, and uh, of course it's a hand launch using elevons for uh, pitch and roll control. It flew pretty well, uh, but again, without the prop wash over that wing, I'm not sure it would have survived the hand launch, but it had enough thrust, and just with a absolutely flat surface and a square, it, it did fly. When I designed this plane, I had no idea if it was going to fly or not, but it has enough power, elevons keep it uh, level. You have to kind of fly it. It doesn't, it's not super steady on its own, but once you settle down, it's a surprisingly stable flyer. Very interesting to see it fly, and actually a, a quite good flyer, all things considered. Again, you can see it slows down very well, a little bit of an angle of attack, and coming around here for a landing. Another example of uh, electric ducted fans and, and how you can anticipate the flight characteristics. I got a fairly large wing, so I think there's going to be some lift here. There's a little bit of an airfoil shape. However, it's an electric ducted fan inside here. All the thrust comes out of the back. There is no help from a pr propeller in front to increase the relative wind over the wings. But I've got to hand launch the thing. I don't have the um, luxury like I did with the J10 of taking off on the ground until I get enough air speed to take off and climb out. I've got to give it enough airspeed with a hand launch to get it to fly before it can pick up its airspeed and continue from there. The plane flies well. You'll see on this initial test flight, when I did the hand launch, it was still building up its airspeed. It didn't have quite enough. It actually hit the ground and like a rock uh, skipping off the water, skipped off the ground. It had just enough airspeed to go ahead and fly away from there. But again, just understanding 
the, the need for the higher air speed with the uh, electric ducted fan coming out the tail, no help going over the wing or helping with the control surfaces. Again with the Savannah, good demonstration. We launch it, but all the relative wind has to come from the plane flying through the air. It didn't have quite enough. You saw it skip off the ground, but once it gets its speed up, it's a good hit on the little model. It flies fine, but the swept wing, the jet, the EDF, you have to keep your speed up to have this fly. It's not going to be a floating trainer. Thank you for joining me in this video. I think it's a useful discussion to understand where the power plant is, the type of airplane, the wing, what's going to happen with the thrust, how that will affect the airspeed characteristics. And hopefully this discussion has gotten you thinking along those lines so you have some anticipation of how your new RC model is going to fly. Thank you.